Hi. Uh, in today's video, I have uh, a game that was actually played by myself, but more importantly, by my opponent in this game, who was uh, the guy on the left there, Brian Thorfinnsson. Now, Brian, he's one of my my very best friends in life. Uh, we've known each other for a very long time. Uh, of course, through chess, you know, he was a child prodigy. I am uh, four years older than him. So when he was coming up, you know, I was, you know, uh, a tough guy, you know, in the club, a little bit older. But then he really, really, really quickly caught up. And yeah, we've known each other for, for a very long time. Probably about 30 years, uh, close to 30 years. And... Several times we've gone to uh, interesting tournaments uh, abroad. I think our first time was when we went to the United States back in 1990. At that time we had uh, biannual competitions between Icelandic kids and kids from New York. Uh, in general from New York, but from all around the, the States. I think mostly the East Coast. And they were called Collins kids, uh, coached by John Collins or Jack Collins. Uh, for some reason, he was called John and Jack. I'm I'm not sure, but he was a he, he was a legendary coach. He was one of the coaches of of Bobby Fischer. So these matches were organized in a in a hotel in the mountains. Very very interesting tournament, and uh, yeah, we've gone to several trips together since then. And I guess our most recent trip was to the Baku Olympiad in 2016. There is Bray. Um, Second from the, from the left, and then me. I was the captain. Bray was uh, first reserve. Played a very nice tournament. So yeah, one of my best friends. And tonight we're actually having a a nice celebration to celebrate his grandmaster title. So yeah, finally he did it. Uh, I was with him at the four NCL when he broke. 2500 some years ago with, with a fantastic he got a GM norm had a fantastic tournament drew against Nigel Short beat some strong guys I think he beat Hawkins uh, Yeah, some very tough guys So he got a GM norm and got his rating over 2500 and then finally Very recently he completed his final GM norm uh, in Norway and I think Kragero, right? Yeah where he uh yeah, played a good tournament. Uh, it was funny that you know he, he has played better tournaments and luck hasn't been on his side. But finally, uh, you know he had some luck in the last round, where he was uh, you know struggled at the start, but pulled it together against the Juan Kahuska to bring home the bacon, sail it home. So now, yeah, third and final Grandmaster Norm. So congratulations to Brian. Now we played so many games throughout the years. And there was even a stretch in 2007 when we played five games uh, in the same year, classical games. So virtually every tournament, and I had black in all of them. And, <laughs> and all of the games were, were super interesting. We never played the same opening. And I'm actually intending to uh, make a series of these games. Something like Battling Bray or something. But uh, the game I'm going to choose was actually played in 2007, so it's kind of a sneak preview. Bray had the white pieces and he opened with knight to f3. And already it was next to impossible for me to uh, figure out what he was going to do. Uh, he has already played d4, uh, e4 against me in the same year and in, in games past. So this time knight to f3 and I decided to surprise him by going for the Grunfeld, which at the time I hadn't played, you know, for some time. Okay, he takes on b5, and now he hasn't played d4, so it's kind of a, an anti Grunfeld. So he goes for this queen to a4 check, which is a sneaky line because you don't get, uh, you know, white hasn't played d4, so the lines are a bit different. Bishop to d7, queen to b3. And I played knight b6, okay. You know, double attack. Logical move. And now d4 by Bray. Of 
funnily enough, I had had this position before against Jonathan Spielmann uh, back in 2003 at the Gibraltar Chess Festival. And there I drew in a very nice game, which, well, I have to make a video on that one. It was a re really nice draw, one of my best results. But yeah, four years later, I couldn't remember what I did, and I played bishop e6 in this one. So bishop g7 was in the in the other game, but here I played bishop e6. And still, I think it's probably an okay move. The most common move now is queen to c2. And it kind, of, it kind of makes more sense to keep the queen on c2, but Bray played queen t1. And, well, it actually has a point. It, it, it adds an extra defender to d4, which proves to be important in our game. Now here, I should have again played bishop d7 and just get castled. You know, don't get too fancy. You know, the uh, the fundamentals apply, you know, at every stage. So, you know, bishop d7, get castled. Maybe I was a bit worried about h4, h4 h5, because Bray likes to play in sort of a dynamic way. So if you give him the, the initiative, he's a very dangerous player. So I always try to kind of avoid that. But okay, knight c6. So now with the queen on d1, the pawn isn't attacked. Well, not by the pawn, but by the knight here. So extra protection. So this gives him time actually to play e4. And this is why knight c6, which I think was a novelty and probably is still, well, if it was a novelty then, it's, it's it's still a novelty. I mean, it hasn't been played much since then. So e4, and now I have to do something because d5 is threatened. But I thought this was okay. Okay, this is normal development for the knights in such lines in the Grunfeld. And bishop g4. So now I have some pressure here. I'm trying to take. And I guess I was expecting uh, kind of, you know, bishop b3 or something. And I'm very close to getting quite a normal uh, Grunfeld position. But Brahe, yeah, again, likes to play dynamically and he went for d5. Now, I played bishop takes f3. Problem with knight e5, which looks like the normal move, is a nice tactic. But, I mean, you might have seen such a, such a so it's a motif, you take on e5, you give up the queen, and bishop b5, check. I have to play c6. I mean, knight d7, he just takes. <clears throat> and these threats give white uh, the upper hand. So instead, I took an f3. And I thought this was okay. I mean, if he takes with the queen, have some options. Maybe knight d4, bishop g7. No, knight d4, then I can... Protect the knight with c5 or knight e5, but he takes with a pawn. So he typical Bray, you know, the dynamic chess. He damages his pawn structure, but okay, it's my move. I have to react, and then he can make a tempo move. I think I should have gone knight b8, but th this is sort of not in the spirit of the Grunfeld. I didn't want to make such a move, but it's probably the best move. I played knight e5, and again Bray goes forward f4. And knight e to d7. So Bray always keeps going forward. I told you, with initiative, he's dangerous. Queen d4, he's not giving me any time to play bishop g7 and castle. Now attack on the rook. What to do? I, I don't want to play rook g8. It's such an ugly move. And it means I would have to castle queenside, and that's very difficult to organize. So I'll play knight f6. Seems okay. Uh, if e5, I can take on d5. So I only have to deal with bishop b5, and I thought, okay, bishop b5, I'll just play c6, which is what I did. And the pawn is pinned. His queen will be hanging. I thought, okay, this is this is okay. I mean, if the bishop has to retreat, I'm just better, so what's going on here? Well, Bray, of course, took off the gauntlet. And he couldn't resist. Uh, he can't resist with the initiative. And he took on c6, giving up the queen. Okay, I have no choice here. I can't take, of course, bishop takes. I'm just losing material. So I'll take on d4. Correct move. C takes b7. But here, I lose the threat. If I play knight fd7, which is the best move, I'm, I'm okay, and it's a fight that will keep, keep on going. He will take uh, the rook with check. Knight takes. 
And I saw this and I thought this is very dangerous. He castles queenside and he's threatening this. I can't play knight b6 because bishop takes b6. So what to do? But it turns out I can just play bishop g7. And okay, he has a choice to take here, either with the bishop or the rook. He has to take with the bishop if he takes with the rook. Well, number one, I can castle and I'm fine. But uh, number two, I can play bishop takes c3. And he has no good discovery. So this is actually good for black. And yeah, in case of bishop takes d7. King f8. And... What I missed was that uh, I can make a square like this. The king uh, gets out to g7. So something like this, I missed in my calculations. It's a long time ago and I didn't really have it in my notes, but this is definitely the reason, you know, if I missed that, I thought I was getting mated or something. So I didn't want to go for knight after d7. So instead I played king to d8 and this he leaves white firmly with the upper hand, he takes with check. Now my knight is stuck in the corner. And I sort of have really bad pieces, no development here. Meanwhile, after bishop e3, all the white pieces are getting out. And to add insult to injury, my queen has to get off the default because of this. So he can make more tempo moves, long castles with check. I have no choice here really, king c8 or king c7, both are, are quite bad. I went with king c8, bishop a6, check. And yeah, the computer says king p1 is the best move, like plus three, but it's very non human. And Brian went with the second best move, rook d4, which is you know, typical human move. It's a tempo move, you attack the queen, you want to bring the other rook in, uh, you have rook c4 coming. Terrible. Uh, and I actually don't have a choice here. Um, I took a d4, which it's the best move, but it doesn't matter. Black is just lost. And here uh, I... Uh, okay, I, I can fight with bishop h6, but it's it's a lost position. I played knight b6 and I resigned after knight b5. I simply have no good moves. Uh, king b8, <laughs> the king is trapped, bishop e5. Rook d1 is coming. I'm already down a pawn. And yeah, I'm about to get checkmated or lose more material. So no reason to continue here, and a nice win for Bray. So this is sort of my my uh, <laughs> impromptu tribute game to Bray, and I'm very happy for him. A very good friend. Yeah, and now time to uh, shower up, suit up, uh, and go party. I hope you enjoyed this game. I'll see you later. Bye bye.